So, welcome delegates once again uh, to our technical session. You see, uh, camels species have been a species that have supported farmers worldwide, providing a means of food, transport, leisure, and pride. Reproduction in this species has been different from other domestic animals and has been relatively slow. Anatomic and physiological differences in this species have prevented the rapid growth of reproductive technologies as they occurred in cattle or other domestic species. During last several years, a lot of research carried out worldwide have improved our understanding of the reproductive processes in this species and, and have facilitated the application of newer reproductive technologies. Friends, when we uh, initially had an idea of conducting a webinar on camel reproduction, uh, it was in my mind to just uh, collate the knowledge and then uh, spread it so that people can understand. But when we just started uh, preparing for the camel reproduction, I had to myself learn some of the things which I was not aware. And then when we just sent the invitation for joining this webinar, it was an overwhelming response. And and uh, a, that brought to my notice what is the importance of camel and what is the importance of reproduction in uh, particular. So uh, let me share some of the important aspects or the distinctive features of the camel reproduction. Camels are kept for milk production in Africa and Asia. As uh, our chief guest has said, the global camel population is estimated at 35 million. In the sub-Saharan Africa, camels contribute about 5% of the total milk production. Somalia is by far the largest camel milk producer in the world, followed by Kenya and Mali. Camels are raised in Gulf countries for the racing events and for the pride of the racing events. The Indian, in the Indian subcontinent, Camels are raised for agriculture, transport, and a source of milk. Now, my purpose of uh, showing you these pictures is that there is a diverse and diverse use of camels. You see, this one is from Africa, where uh, camel is being used for transport, for bringing in water, for bringing in food. This one is a uh, picture from the uh, Dubai camel racing event, where camels are a matter of pride and the camel that wins a race brings pride to its owners. And then coming back to our own place, these are two other pictures from the camel festival, which is organized here. And uh, in this one, you can see a camel dancing. And in this one, you can see the Rabile of Rajasthan. So uh, camels have a diverse use. Uh, the camel population in our country is on decline. And as uh, Dr. Mishra has already stated that from 2012 to 2019 in the state of Rajasthan, which is the biggest, uh, which is the state having the highest number of camels, there is a decline of 34.69%. Now, uh, there might be some uh, who uh, are not aware of the new world camelids and the old world camelids. That's why I have taken this slide that the new world camelids include the Lamini and which include the Guanaco, Lama, Alpaca and Vicogna. These uh, uh, camelid species are raised in uh, the uh, South American countries and some other places. Whereas the old world camelids, which includes the camelini and it includes the Arabian camel or the dromedary camel, which is uh, raised in many parts of Africa, the Gulf countries, the Indian subcontinent, including India and Pakistan and many other places. 
and then the Bactrian camel, which is raised in China, Southeast Asia, and the wild Bactrian type of camel, which is found in Australia. So these are the pictures of the, the dromedary camel, which is, uh, and the Bactrian camel, which has two humps, and the wild Bactrian camel, which uh, is uh, raised in Australia, or which is found as feral. And these few are the pictures of the South American camelids, the llama, the Vicogna and Gonaco. So the breeding season, camel is a seasonal breeder and it breeds during the time of the year when these are shot. Uh, in some countries like Kenya, the breeding is continuous and uh, for other countries, the breeding season varies from December to May in Egypt, November to March in India, December to March in Pakistan, and from December to March, March to August in Saudi Arabia and Sudan, and November to April in United Arab Emirates. Now, uh, let me throw some light on the reproductive anatomy of the female camels. The camel ovaries are dorsoventrally flattened in adults, slightly convex in camel heifers. They are suspended by the mesovarium and enclosed in ovarian bursa and located on the pelvis or just ahead of it. The weight of camel ovaries varies from 2 to 5 gram and the length 2 to 5, uh, 2.5 to 6 centimeter. The, uh, this is the picture showing the ovarian bursa. When I, for the first time, tried to pulpate the camel ovaries, uh, it was amazing for me because I had to sit down, kneel down, and then perform the transrectal pulpation. The uterus of the camel is biconvate. It is uh, considered to be T or Y shaped, and the left uterine horn is longer as compared to the right uterine horn. The camel uterus is present at the brim of the pelvic cavity or just ahead of it. The left horn is longer in the pluriparous females, but of equal size in the primiparous uh, camel heifers. The cervix, the camel cervix is soft with three or four longitudinal folds. The consistency of the cervix does not differ with that of the uterus, and the cervix projects caudally in the vaginal cavity, forming a fornix 1 to 1.5 centimeter. The external cervical orifice is surrounded by one to two circular indented rings of the cranial part of the mucosa of the vagina. The oviduct is long and tortuous. The uterine and isthmus is well developed and its length varies from 17 to 22 centimeters long. The vagina of the camel is long 30 centimeter and have two vestibular glands on the lateral walls. The vagina has many longitudinal folds. The interior vagina and the vestibulum are separated by a strong band of tissue, the vestibulum sphincter muscle and the hymen, which is very tight in young and nulliparous females. The vulva of the female camel opens directly below the anus and measures six to seven centimeter in length. The clitoris is very small and there is no distinct clitoral fossa. The urethra is also short and the opening of the urinary meatus is small. The hymen or its remnants marks the separation between the vulva and the vagina. Now, uh, I would like to share some of the distinctive features of the reproductive <coughs> physiology of the female camels. It, as Professor Mishra has rightly said, the estrus cycle is difficult to be defined in camels, and the cervical mucus is scanty and less viscous, and other signs of estrus are less marked as compared to other animal species. Camels are seasonally polyesterous. The puberty occurs from four to five years in females and around five to six years in the males, around 400 kg of weight. Now, uh, uh, I would like to share some of uh, the important e events of follicular dynamics. The follicular growth occurs during the breeding season. Although there are some reports which also depict that during the non-breeding season, also one can find say, a few of the follicles. But usually camels do not breed during that time. And it is because the males do not show the rutting behavior at that time. 
the follicular growth is continuous during the breeding season and in the absence of mating as uh, the ovulation in the camel is mating induced and that is why the follicular growth is continuous during the breeding season and in the absence of the mating the ovulation depends on the mating once the camel is mated there will be ovulation if it is not mated there will be no ovulation there is no luteal phase in non mated camels and in mated non pregnant camels the luteal phase is very short 6 to 9 days so it's really very different from uh, cattle and other animal species the follicular activity continues in the presence of an active cl and follicular recruitment takes 2 to 4 days uh, there is a growth phase of 10 to 12 days and a dominance at 6 mm uh, there are other reports uh, showing slightly slight variation from this the maximum follicle size to ovulate uh, the minimum follicle size to ovulate is 9 to 10 mm the fate of the dominant follicle in the absence of mating is anovulatory follicle the anovulatory follicle may persist for many days or regress in 4 to 18 days the anovulatory uh, in the absence of mating the anovulated follicle may turn out to be hemorrhagic and uh, for people who are collecting oocytes from the follicles of camel ovaries it becomes very difficult if they collect uh, try to collect oocytes from the hemorrhagic follicles because then it will be difficult to visualize the oocyte due to presence of many rbcs the follicular growth can occur in the presence of an presence of a anovulatory follicle even if a anovulatory follicle <coughs> is present the follicular growth may occur now this picture is uh, uh, being shown to you to uh, show out the uh, levels of different hormones and to show that uh, the in the in the mated camels also uh, after 6 to 9 days there will be mated non pregnant camels there will be release of prostaglandin f2 alpha and there will be another follicular uh, growth phase so uh, to some extent the camel breeders they think that you breed the camel any time during the breeding season and it will become pregnant to some extent they are right but not to the fullest extent now the reproductive behavior in camels female camels uh, is less marked as i said already chasing other females receptivity towards a male restlessness and bleating up and down movement of the tail on approach of the male these are few of the reproductive behaviors shown by the female camels the camel uh, has four teats in uh, the udder and the milk vein is very very well marked then mating in the camels is very special uh, the when the male approaches the female uh, the female in estrus would uh, sit down in the recumbent position and then camels may bite each other and uh, male and female may bite each other and then the male camel it sits down and uh, gives a natural mating uh, in a sitting position and during that mating a female may bite the male camel the mating in camels may take from 6 to 12 minutes and some reports they depict even a longer period so these are the pictures showing you the mating in the female camel being provided by the male camel again this picture shows the mating and the female is biting the male during uh, the mating the, as i said uh, mating uh, the ovulation is induced in response to a mating and ovulation occurs 24 to 30 hours later if the size of follicle is between 8 to 20 mm large anovulatory follicles may sometimes not ovulate in response to mating and transrectal ultrasound can show some of the anovulatory follicles with echogenic specks or strands follicles grow to ovulatory size in 6 days there are other reports uh, mentioning that Uh, a slight variation from this period 
then the formation of the corpus luteum a cyclic cl is absent in non mated camels the cl formation occurs 24 to 48 hours after mating with slow development and early death 6 to 9 days the regression occurs 8 to 12 days following a infertile mating so here you can see the corpus luteum formed on the camel ovaries the uh, other distinctive features the embryo descends in the uterus at day 6 to 7 of mating the embryo elongates at day 9 to 10 and little is known about the maternal recognition of pregnancy signals in camel probably the signal must be secreted by day 8 migration of embryos is common in camels day 15 to 18 post breeding implantation uh, mechanisms of implantation are not clearly known and possibly occurs by day 20 the mechanism of luteolysis are also poorly known for the camel and uh, it has also been mentioned that there is difference in the luteolytic properties of prostaglandins from the left and the right uterine horns there is exclusive left uterine horn pregnancy this is very uh, peculiar to the camel uh, even if uh, the ovary on the right side ovulates a embryo would migrate to the to be established as a pregnancy in the left uterine horn the gestation period varies from 390 plus minus 10 days and twins are rare then there is one more special feature of uh, camels there is presence of an extra fetal membrane termed the epidermal membrane which is 1 to 2 mm thick attached to the fetus at lips nostrils anus vulva prepuce foot pad and umbilicus the precise uh, function of this epidermal membrane is not known but it has been mentioned that possibly it acts as a shock absorber then this is uh, uh, just a pic uh, for a paternal dromedary twins which we reported in 1999 and uh, both the male as well as the female were normal and uh, but there are uh, there have been many reports around the world on inducing twin twins by embryo bisection and many other techniques but i am not going to discuss that because uh, that would be a more precise uh maybe it is discussed by our other uh, orators then pregnancy diagnosis in camel a pregnant camel which show will show it by lifting and curving her tail and camel owners they usually think that when the camel uh lifts and curves her tail for the cocking of the tail it is always a precise uh, uh exhibition that Uh, the female camel is pregnant uh, it is first seen at around 20 days of gestation and persists throughout the camels uh, at some locations might have developed the ovarian cysts and uh, they will evidence tail cocking as well as a higher progesterone but uh, it's less frequent at other places ovarian cysts are less less frequent at other places then there is an increase in the abdominal size during later gestation and transrectal palpation can be done in camels without any difficulty but uh, it can be it should be done in a camel restrained in a uh, restrained properly and in a sitting camel examination can be done uh, the sometimes you require administration of xylazine because the camel uh, might be vicious from 0.5 to 2 mg per kg intravenously and uh, this is evident that the effect has come by the loss of the lower lip tone in the female camel then this picture it shows that some smaller size camels as they are uh, maintained for racing events in the gulf countries they can be examined in a standing position in a traverse specially built for camels having a raised platform then transrectal ultrasonography it, it can be used for pregnancy diagnosis uh, again the camel has to restrain to be restrained uh, in a sitting position and then the 
uh, examiner can put his hand inside and uh, evaluate the camel uterus for the presence of pregnancy. So here are some of the pictures showing a pregnant camel and here you can see a small embryo, a slightly more advanced embryo and that can be a cardinal signal that a female camel is pregnant. Now uh, I would like to share some of the important uh, or the distinctive features of uh, the reproductive organs of the male camels. The uh, camel testes and scrotum, the scrotum lies high in the perineal region. The testicles are oval in shape and lie obliquely. The right testicle is slightly smaller as compared to the left testicle. The testicle length is 7 to 10 centimeter and the weight varies uh, is around 90 grams. During the breeding season, there is increase in the size of the testicles as they are more exposed caudally. Here you can see in this picture that the uh, testes has uh, enlarged during the breeding season. The camel penis is a center of attraction for uh, many who do not know about and our uh, chief guest also pointed out that it is amazing that the camel is ur urinating towards the caudal portion, how it, uh, it would be able to uh, perform a mating. Uh, the camel has a pre scrotal sigmoid flexure. The penis is fibroelastic and about 60 centimeter long. It is directed backwards when flaccid and the spiral glance penis is curved, giving it a hook shape. Externally, the penis is covered by a triangular shaped sheet, the prepuce, which opens to the rear. Externally, the penis is covered by a triangular shaped sheet, the prepuce, which is sorry. The male camel urinates towards the rear between the hind legs. You, you can see the prepuce is pointing towards the back and the camel is urinating in between the hind legs, raising his tail. His, the, due to presence of a well-developed lateral prepucial muscle, in addition to the cranial and caudal muscles, the prepucial orifice can be directed either cranially or caudally during erection and maturation. See here in this picture, the prepuce is directed caudally and when uh, uh, because uh, the moving round of cannot uh, of the uh, of the prepuce cannot be seen in a standing camel. So in this picture, I have tried to show you that this will uh, move round in this direction because the uh, camel penis it protrudes when the camel is ready, ready and sits down. Uh, so it becomes difficult to obtain a picture uh, how it is rotating around. But it is interesting and this is the fact that the prepucial orifice can be directed either cranially or caudally during erection and maturation. Male camels have prostate glands and bulbourethral glands, but seminal vesicles are absent. There is peculiar behavior of the male camels. During the breeding season, male camels evidence special behavior called the rut. The male camels become somewhat aggressive during the breeding season. These are few of the peculiar behaviors shown by the camel. The sniffing, uh, fleeman response, grinding of the teeth or uh, whistling, the gurgling sounds, urinating, open hind legs, tail flapping and beating, then pole gland secretion, an extrusion of the soft palate, that is the dulla, and uh, noticeable loss of weight. Here you can see in this picture a camel opening uh, his hind legs. This one is uh, production of plenty of froth from the mouth, and this is extrusion of the dulla by the male camel. This is the pole gland secretion, which is high in androgen content occurs during the breeding season or during the rutting season. And in these two pictures, you can see this camel was having such type of body configuration before the breeding season. During the breeding season, there is tremendous loss of weight and the body configuration is seen here showing a tremendous loss of weight and the ribs are visible now. And this is the Fleeman response showed by the male camel. So hopefully this information would be useful for you and uh, thank you very much for your patient listening 
thank you thank you so much